Hello and welcome. This is a key stage three biology video for reproduction in humans. Remember, a work along sheet is in the description below. So we have reproduction in humans. We are looking at humans as an example of a mammal. So this could be pretty much the same in most, if not all mammals. We're looking at humans. You could argue that the start point of reproduction is when we have the joining of egg and sperm or the joining of an egg cell and a sperm cell. To see how this happens, let's start by looking at the male reproductive system. So here's a diagram of the male reproductive system. And we can add some labels to this that we need to know and remember. And the first one is right at the bottom there. We have two testes labeled as shown there. We have the penis and then we have a tube that runs down the middle of the penis called the urethra. We have a sperm tube and here, just so you can see, I've also included the bladder in this diagram as well. The testes have an important role. They produce sperm cells. They produce sperm cells. Probably important to make a note that sperm cells are what's known as the male gamete, the male gamete. Let's define or say what we mean by gametes. Important keyword. Gametes are known as the sex cells. So gametes are sex cells. In humans and mammals, the male sex cell is sperm or sperm cells. And for females, it's eggs or egg cells. So back to our diagram. The penis in reproduction has the job to carry sperm cells out of the body. So the sperm, uh, so the penis carries sperm cells out of the body. The urethra is basically the tube that the sperm cells travel along. So that's a tube that carries the sperm cells. The bladder, this is not really part of reproduction not part of reproduction but it's just there so you can see how it actually connects with the whole system so that's not part of reproduction and then finally the sperm tube on the left hand side has the role of carrying sperm cells from the testes to the urethra which is in the penis so the sperm tube will carry sperm cells from the testes to the penis via the sperm tube and along into the urethra. That's the male reproductive system. We could take a look at the female reproductive system. So here we have a diagram of the female reproductive system and again a few key labels that we need to know and remember. These two in yellow are the ovaries. We then have this part here that's either called the womb or the uterus, either name is fine. We have the cervix and we have the vagina, and over on the left is a tube called the oviduct. Ovaries have an important job. They produce egg cells. They produce and release egg cells. You could say they mature and release egg cells, but that's the main job of the ovaries. The oviduct is like a tube, or it is a tube, where the egg cell travels along. So you could say the oviduct carries eggs or egg cells to the womb. Worth also remembering that another name for the oviduct, the oviduct is also called a fallopian tube. A fallopian tube. So two names for the same structure, oviduct or fallopian tube. The womb is the part of the reproductive system where a baby develops, where a baby develops usually over about nine months, but that's where the baby develops. We call it a fetus as it's developing. The cervix, this is shown in the diagram there, and that's basically the entry point to the uterus, and it joins with, or joins to, the vagina. So that's the cervix there, as, as uh, seen in the diagram. 
So this is the female reproductive system. Let's have a look and see what happens when we have pregnancy. So this is the idea of fertilization when we have the joining of an egg cell. So here you can see an egg cell just being uh, released by an ovary there slightly larger than it actually is it's not quite to scale but that egg can be released it will move down the oviduct and it might meet sperm cells it might mean meet sperm cells so the egg is released and it might meet might meet sperm cells in the oviduct if we do have sperm cells and egg cells present at the same time one of the sperm cells very likely will get into the egg the egg will form an instant barrier to any more sperm cells so only one sperm cell can get in and the other sperm cells will not be able to get in once the first one has entered the egg cell so then we have a fertilized egg that egg will continue to move down the oviduct and then implant itself into the lining of the uterus so the fertilized egg implants in the lining of the womb i said uterus but remember uterus and womb is the same thing so now we have a fertilized egg and that will lead to the development of the fetus remember the fetus is the baby as it develops in the womb if we magnify into that little white square there here's our fertilized egg this is now a cell it will then divide into two cells then four and it will continue to divide until we have what's called an embryo an embryo this is a little ball of cells that has nothing uh, or no special cells at the moment but after this point the cells specialize the, spe the cells specialize which means they become the kind of cells needed for the different parts of the body here is a fetus this is a fetus that's about one month old and this will continue to develop in the womb or in the uterus over a period of about nine months the scale's not quite right on that diagram the fetus would be much smaller if we were to do it to the right scale however the fetus then grows over a period of about nine months until we have birth and that's about it so then we have birth and this is um, a little baby perhaps a little sketch of a baby again the scale not quite right compared to the size of the fetus but here it is so that was it reproduction in humans looking at how egg cells sperm cells join together to produce a fetus and then a developing baby